Hello and welcome to the channel. Lately I've been listening to a lot of Beatles solo stuff, especially with a new expanded edition of All Things Must Pass looking likely to be released sometime soon. And I got to thinking, if the band had released albums in the 1970s, what would they have sounded like? So for a bit of fun, I picked out the year 1975 for an imaginary Beatles album. So. In 1975, the Beatles get back together. They're renewed and refreshed and start working at London's Abbey Road Studios. My choice of producer would be Alan Parsons. Parsons' work on Dark Side of the Moon and The Year of the Cat by Al Stewart was so sonically perfect that hi-fi shops use those albums to demonstrate to customers the merits of new stereo equipment back in the 1970s and 1980s. So with Parsons in the producer's chair, I reckon you'd have an album that sounded absolutely fantastic and he'd bring out all the little nuances, all the wonderful nuances of the band. I've picked out 11 tracks for the album, but one thing we must take into account, that if these songs were worked on and played by the Beatles, they would go through what I call the Beatle effect. What do I mean by that? Well, each one of the four had their own utterly unique musical skill set. Ringo supplied his iconic drum patterns for songs over and over and over again. No one played like Mr. Starr. Paul McCartney, despite being a great songwriter and being able to produce melodies at the drop of a hat, he was one of the most inventive bass players ever. Go and have a listen to something. And listen to Paul's bass line as it sets up a counter melody to George's vocal. John Lennon, when he was on it, no one wrote songs like John and he was an extremely overlooked guitar player. His rhythm playing for example is something else and he also was blessed with one of the best rock and roll voices ever. Mr Harrison, I've always loved George's vocals and another extremely gifted songwriter as well as being a very underrated guitarist. I'm not even going to try to describe the Beatles vocal arrangements. They are the stuff of pure genius. The more I delve into the Beatles music and start to comprehend what they were doing, the more mind-blowing it becomes. Track one, it has to be Rock Show from Venus and Mars. It's a driving fun song jam-packed with melodies and hooks and it shows Paul's wonderful gift for blending various snippets of songs together to form something wonderful. For me it would be the perfect showcase for the boys to show off their talents. And can you imagine if they performed it live as the first number? It would bring the house down. Track 2, John's Going Down on Love from the Walls and Bridges album. It's a pretty perfect fit for any Beatles album. I just love to hear Paul and George on backing vocals. Track three, You by George Harrison. It's taken from the Extra Texture album, which is an album I always feel George's heart wasn't really in. But this track is a beauty. Originally written for Ronnie Spector, George found that when he came to record it, he pitched it in a key much higher than was his normal vocal range. It works though, and the song has an absolutely gorgeous melody. Though I do feel if George could have written a couple of extra verses, it would have made the song into an all-time classic. I'd also lose the orchestra and just have like a five-piece horn section blasting it out as well as the sax. When, in my imagination, I see the Beatles performing it, I see a black and white video, the boys dressed up like the early 60s, Ringo on his raised drum kit, George on one mic, Paul and John on the other, all smiling. The world would go nuts. Track 4, What You Got. Now while I like the version on John's Walls and Bridges album, the demo of this song takes it down a notch and has a great insistent Bo Diddley rhythm which I feel suits the song a lot more 
and John's vocals on the demo are a bit more restrained. So on my imaginary album, I'd pitch it somewhere between the demo and the recorded version, and you are left with just a monster of a song. Track five to end side one of my imaginary 1975 Beatles album, it has to be Letting Go, again from Venus and Mars. This always, for me, was one of the highlights of Paul's Wings career, and I can only dream of what the Beatles would have done with it. It's funky, it's slinky, I'd have Billy Preston on keys, John and George on swirling backing vocals, that five-piece horn section just pumping it out. What a perfect end to side one. To open side two, I picked another track from John's Walls and Bridges album, Whatever Gets You Through the Night. But when the Beatles do it, I want to see, I want to hear John and Paul on harmonised lead vocals. Wow. Track two, and I've taken a bit of a liberty here and included George's Pure Smokey from his 1976 album, 33 and a third. As I've said before, I didn't think George's heart was in extra texture at all. Smokey is a beautiful tribute to Smokey Robinson and its title comes from Smokey Robinson's 1974 album, Pure Smokey. George has said that Robinson had such a huge effect on the Beatles in the 1960s and the track would also give George a chance to shine on lead guitar. Track three, again from Wings, Venus and Mars, Paul's Love in Song. When people talk about great Paul McCartney songs, this is never mentioned. And I've always felt it's one of Paul's most overlooked songs. Quite simply, it's just beautiful. Track four, Beautiful Girl. It's another song pinched from George's 33 and a third album. But George had already written this and considered it for All Things Must Pass in 1970. You could place it on Rubber Soul and it would fit perfectly. And so to track five, It Don't Come Easy by George Harrison. I know George wrote this and gave it to Ringo and Ringo had a hit with it, I think 1971. But in the description below, I'm gonna put a link to George's demo of it. It's just a fantastic song and it has a special place in my heart because it's the only song Ringo's version that I can remember my dad dancing to. Another sublime George Harrison melody. Can you imagine what it would have been like put through the Beatles effect? But it was just like George to give it away to his buddy Ringo. George was on fire around 1969-1970 and I cannot wait for the expanded edition of All Things Must Pass. His son Danny says they're digging through mountains and mountains of tapes. So, how would you finish an album like this? It has to be a three minute version of Goodnight Vienna. It's all down to Goodnight Vienna. The track was written by John and given to Ringo for his solo album of the same name. I'd have Ringo take lead vocals and as the song began to finish and it started to fade, I'd have the rest of the boys joining in on a nice little sing-along. The words, Good Night Vienna, are British slang for it's over, it's completed, nothing more can be done. A perfect way to end what is for me a perfect album. And I think if the Beatles had done this imaginary album in 1975, you'd have never got it off the charts. It would have been there for years and years and years. So thanks for joining me in this little bit of fun and I'd love to know what your choice is, what would be your selections for an imaginary 1975 Beatles album. Thank you for listening, please post your comments in the comment section below, like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Stay well, stay safe, God bless.